Now entering King's Row. All right, right into it. Our lower bracket is still happening, by the way. So if you do see a team go out, we are mostly covering the upper bracket. So the teams that you see who lose in our upper bracket are still fighting it out in the lower bracket, too. So if you are a fan of FaZe, if you're not, they are still in it trying to fight their way back in. And FaZe, if we saw them back in the ultimate grand finals here, would not be surprised. I think they, of all the teams here, they definitely have a great possibility of fighting the way back up. But even then, you look at teams like Complexi. Complexi took two maps off Team Liquid earlier. It's just been a close day in general. Yeah, I mean, the teams that we have on, on the upper half of this are just, they're all fighting each other very closely. I mean, right now, maybe it's just recency bias. This Cloud9 team looks really, really strong. I'm, I'm having a hard time picturing a team taking a best of five off of them, and that's because how well they played against FaZe, although it was very close, and that was a really good performance on Gibraltar, although Gibraltar is a traditionally Cloud9 map when, well, when they had their their former six, but apparently a map that still uh, Kai Kai and Adam and, and Shortfor do enjoy. And take a look here at this liquid defense. As I said, it's getting Mezar on the Reinhardt, the Hang on Ana, Minstrel on the Lucio, Rafa on Zarya, AZK on Reaper, and ID. This is interesting. He's coming out here on not an offensive Hanzo, but a defensive Hanzo, something you don't see as often. The teams are more than willing to run Hanzo on the attack, especially at right. the first point, but Hanzo on the defense, this is a slightly different wrinkle. You very rarely see Hanzos on both teams. So this is this is uh, one of the first times I've seen it in a competitive match where we're going to see Hanzo versus Hanzo action. Also, Mendo it continues to run this Pharah and running it on offensive King's Road, not necessarily that surprising, but it does force them into uh, a mercy as well. So uh, some interesting stuff. But simply is the battle of geometry. ID very lucky didn't go down early on, was down to three HP, but is able to win that Hanzo on Hanzo battle, taking down Sure for two quick strikes here from the side of Team Liquid. And the one thing about that though, you can never get complacent on defense for King's Row because the offensive response, they are basically just right there. Yeah, a nice couple kills there is going to give them uh, some charges on their ults though. Rafa was able to keep Mez alive as he got himself a little bit in trouble, but able to keep everyone alive on that Zarya as they rotate in around. So Mendo taking a little bit of a different angle here, not coming up over the top on Kings, which you generally see, but forcing them to, uh, you know, rotate around to statue, getting a different position now. This does put a lot of pressure on ID to shoot Mendo out of the sky. Not always the easiest task for Hanzo. Rib overextends a little bit, feeds a kill here to the side of Liquid. Rafa. But here comes sure for and Kai Kai. They pick off two. Rafa is down. And now this is where Mendo should be able to roll in. A lot of space is created for him. Nothing should really be able to get him out of the sky super easily here. And he's coming in over the top. In with the nano boost. Holding on to the barrage, not using it just yet. A lot of control coming out for him right now, where just decides to use a normal left click on Minstrel. Grabs yeah. AZK. It's a double kill for Mendo. So slow and steady working out for C9 as they will get control of this point extremely patient and they ended up just bleeding a couple kills really late did liquid so no way to be able to get back in here or in good position to defend they're gonna have to concede the point and hang out around second right now though ultimate battles are about to begin both gravitons up and since we have hanzos on both sides we could see a lot of dragons fighting here might be double dragon time it very well could be double dragon time where you take a look at the liquid side. They're going to have Graviton Surge in to Dragon Strike and they're going for it right here, right now. Here comes the Graviton, out comes the dragon and that dragon was hungry, taking down two right away. But here's one thing I take a little bit of issue with here, Hex. Not only is the res coming in, I don't know if it's the best to bring your ult there because even if you do get full wipe, the respawns are right there. Yeah, I mean, it's, the res is, is, of course, going to give them the advantage there. Mendo does come into the barrage, does not get much off it, but does soften everyone up. Rafa and Mez very far forward right now, trying to get some damage and cleaned up, though, as it is now still 6v4 for Cloud9 as they continue to clean up all the remnants of the cart. Minstrel trying to stall this out. Not for long, though. They full, complete team wipe from Cloud9. And look, they're almost going to have their resurrection again. They're going to have res up again. The Kai Kai very close to getting another Graviton up. I'm not sure if Surefour was going to wait for that Graviton to do his next Dragon Strike, but C9 definitely making the best out of that situation. Again, I just wonder if Liquid maybe should have given the C9 a little bit more rope there, let them come in a little bit deeper, and then punish yeah. them. They, were, they went in right at the gate, and I'm not sure if it was the best idea. I mean, when you're fighting into a Mercy and you don't have a Mercy of your own, it's kind of hard to pick the time anyway, right? All right, well, here comes Liquid moving in. Mezrar just swinging the hammer off the nano boost. Man. Picks up for the finest WMS1 action, but there's the resurrection. C9 not out of the, the here just yet. 
but Mezhar isn't done yet. The Sen sure for packing once more. This has been the Mezhar show, just hammer time all around, and it's not stopping. It was on Gibraltar too. That's when they were most successful early on in fights. Is like I mentioned, Mez and AZK are just kind of the the most steady players on this team. Been on this roster for a very long time. Mez going very deep right now. They do take down Adam. Mez should be able to get out alive. Minstrel eats a stray arrow. Got to be careful now. You can't lose Mez out up here. This is pretty aggro coming out here from Liquid and C9 more than willing to counter, go in. The, I'm not sure they need to use Dragon Strike and the Graviton there though. I mean, the Graviton did pick up two kills, but Liquid was so scattered that, again, maybe they could have saved those resources, but C9, they have bought themselves this point in all likelihood. I don't see Liquid coming back in. And C9's still on the verge of setting a pretty darn decent time here. No, Mez unable to get out there because Rafa had switched off of his Zarya. Mez has relied on that Zarya to uh, aid his retreat several different times, but it was only a Winston they were able to do it as Rafa did switch. They're going to boost in Winston. Endo on the ID to start things out here. 5v5 right now on the point. Mendo, though, just slowly getting kill after kill. Drops down the 40 HP, getting it healed up. Has Death Blossom at the ready, but going to be taking the Dirt Nap here. Mezar knocking people down, moving right in. And Mendo, he still goes for Death Blossom anyways, but doesn't get quite enough off of that. Liquid seems to take it personally when teams try to escape. They, they do not like to let people retreat. Uh, you saw the Earth Shatter there, perhaps getting too aggressive on some of those things again. But Rafa does jump into the back lines. He's going to pop Primal Rage to open up some space for his team as the cart was getting pushed pretty far. Oh, he's trying. Did he get Reinhardt into the pit? Did he do it? He did. Rib goes into that pit. Rafa got his prize. That's what he was looking for as AZK right now. Holding on to his Death Blossom. But no shield tank here for C9. It's going to be hard for them to move in. They have to really kind of wait for Rib to get back into this fight. Well, they are just going to boost AZK into the back lines. He takes down two immediately. AZK looking for a little bit more. Not going to get what he's looking for. But when you take down two with that Death Blossom nano combo, it buys you a lot of room and a lot of space. So for Liquid, they're going to hold down a little bit lo longer. And for them, I think if they take maybe two more team fights, even if they lose the map at that point, they'll be in an excellent position. C9 has three to four pushes left in them, and if they use their ults right, they have a really good chance of sling up the map. But look at that. That I immediately being answered here by what else other than Mezar's Earth Shatter, but they don't quite get the kills they're looking for. And Akai Kai going to shield himself from that charge. It's two kills from C9, and now C9 with a golden opportunity. Mendo fighting here in the back versus McCree. Going to get that pick up with Kai Kai. And now it's C9 with all the money in the world. Oh, no! Rafa! <laughs> D.Va herself does not have the jet boost to actually get out of that situation. <laughs> yeah, Rafa on his third tank of the stage so far. Started on Zarya, moving over to Winston, now on the D.Va as well. Apparently seeing something it needs to counter. They are running a couple hit scan over there, so not a bad switch off, but not working out so well as they do get, let the card in pretty far. But it is Mez again who starts it off with a kill. Does get boosted too. Early kill comes out here from Mez. Mendo having the back out a bit. Going to get taken out. Not going to get a chance to counter with the Death Blossom and Liquid. A last gas coming in off the respawn. They're able to turn it right back in the favor. No small part from ID here. Setting things up as the May. Almost building another Blizzard up in the process. So it's all going to come down to this next fight here, Hex. What is going to reign supreme? Will it be Sound Barrier coming out from Liquid and a strong Russian? Or will it be Kai Kai setting up his team once more with the Graviton and the Nano Boost Death Blossom combo? Yeah, so we can find of, out in just yeah, a moment. Speaking of strong Russian, Kai Kai does have that Graviton ready, and they've been using Graviton to set up this Nano Boost. Here goes Mendo in the back lines. Mendo rolling into the back, has Nano Boost, gets absolutely nothing for it to start things out. Does finally, though, get onto Minstrel, and sure for is going to be up to clean up, picking up Two kills there, setting up the rest of C9. Final Diva ultimate coming in from Rafa, not going to really connect. And now it is C9's map to lose. They should be able to cap this out here, Hex. By a little bit of time, that is a clutch blizzard from ID, though. Might be able to bring it back if they get a couple kills. They do not, though, as Kai Kai continues to clean up, but it is buying more time. Still no kill feeds. Uh, notifications for Liquid there as Cloud9 will complete the map with a little shy of 30 seconds left. I gotta say, uh, both teams had their ups and downs in that map. I thought it was good on Liquid just to be, just be gutsy and buy as much time as they did. Uh, there's a few points there where I think they didn't do themselves any favors with how aggressive they were being. The biggest thing for me is when they used the Graviton Dragon right. Strike right at the archway. But other than that, kind of a good showing for both teams. And we'll see if Liquid now can come back and beat this time. Of course, last time we saw them against C9, they set an incredibly quick time when going forward here on King's Row. Yeah. 
So we'll see if they can channel that and do it again. Because if they do, they're going to be in a much better position. Yeah, I feel like the, the Graviton Dragon Strike is something you want to use after you maybe get a kill on Mercy. Now, that's easier said than done, as Mercy's generally hiding in houses. I'm sure that's our play of the game, actually, her staring at the wall during that resurrection. But uh, per popular request, I'll show it to you at the end of the game. We'll see. It does not look like they're going to run in Mercy on the defense. That is only the offensive strategy for Cloud9. They are going to be running... Mendo on the May though, so a defensive May coming in, and yeah, I mean, the, the Overwatch meta, uh, for all people who think like there's only a certain kind of way to play, we see Hanzos and Mays and all sorts of heroes. We saw every single tank last game too, so it is alive and well. Um, only one Hanzo on the field though, fortunately. I'll say in general, I think the meta is in a much better shape than some players were complaining about, where mm -hmm. There was a lot of doom and gloom where people were saying, oh, all it is is 3-3, three, three, triple tank, triple support, but we've seen a lot of switch-ups and variations. I think you could probably rightly make the argument that Nano Boost might be a little bit over the top right now, yeah. but other than that, I don't know if Overwatch has had a meta where we've seen more hero variation than what we see now. Well, I think uh, Blizzard would agree with that argument, considering the changes that they're trying to make to it on the PTR. Uh, my suggestion has always been don't let the, the person under the effects of Nano Boost also gain ultimate, because I think sometimes when you have a Reinhardt who starts the match yeah. with an Earth Shatter, then ends the, the fight with an Earth Shatter, it's a little bit over the top, especially how powerful that ult is. But or at the very least, Blizzard. don't give bonus ult, just make it as if it was a normal unboosted attack, yeah. something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. But they do know that there's a May here on the defense, so they're going to rotate through Hotel. They do find good entry as that wall does not come up. So ID in the back line. They do trade out, though. There goes to Hang. There goes Mendo. Definitely a better trade for the offense. It's a much better trade for the offense. Without the May there, it's going to be much harder for the defensive C9 to control things. And ID going to have way less in his way as he looks for these pickoffs. Mezar able to take down Rib. AZK in the back line. Everything coming up Team Liquid right now is C9. Falling apart on this first point, King's Row defense. Sure, four is found out. I don't know if he's going to have any heroics here to save this point. Yeah, Liquid uh, checking their corners. <laughs> they, they do find sure four. That is the typical Reaper hiding spot. So anyone who plays Reaper on King's Row can tell you that that's probably where the enemy Reaper is. They do end up cleaning up sure four after that. And it all started with a really nice kill onto Mendo with the, with the, the Hanzo error from ID. Uh, they are going to come in and fight. The wall does come up, only segmenting them in half. Not the most impactful just yet. You take a look at Adam right now. Adam just biding his time up here, trying to stall things out. But while this is happening, his team is dying below him. AZK and ID able to get the cleanup they're looking for. Someone at some point is going to have to deal with Adam, who is just parkouring in over the top. Finally loses the parkour and everything going the way of Liquid. Though C9, they do stall out for a little bit longer by may themselves maybe an extra 25, 30 seconds. And I'm kind of okay with that just because you think about what we saw in the other defense. I don't know if you want to get in a team's face right at the archway. A little bit better to hold more, yeah. a little bit further up just so if you do wipe them out, you buy yourselves a bit more time. I feel they were trying to bait out some ultimates, but Liquid being very smart on it, that was unsuccessful as they did hold all their ults and a big ultimate advantage coming into the streets phase of this. They've got their dragon combo up. Minstrel does have his sound barrier too as he is lonely back pushing the cart. The life of Lucio, as it were. I want to talk about how this next fight is going to work out. Mendo right now just looking to start a blizzard, as May would say. I think C9's gonna be pretty aggressive here, but here we go. Graviton Surge coming out from Rafa. Rafa trying to be the first mover here. Dragon Strike moving in on top of it, but they only take out Kai Kai. Surefor doing work in the back. May Mendo still holding on to this Blizzard, but Hex might not even be needed as Liquid losing too many people has to back up and C9 having them on the back foot, but Counter Gage coming from the Shutter. I just don't know if it's gonna be enough. Well, it looks like they did not get the memo of backing up as they do throw alt after alt into this. The Blizzard does come down, freezes ACK, but not before he gets two kills. He does uh, still live on the card as Minstrel keeps him alive and Mez coming in on the tank. So now alt's being burned out on the other side too as Adam ends up being the recipient of the Ana Boost. Mezar coming in with that, ends up getting slept towards the end, but it buys enough space for AZK, moving in, gets the quad kill, finishing off with the stylish elbow, so that was very back and forth, but AZK, the one consistent point in that fight, able to bring things forward, and that was a four kill for Reaper that did not involve a Death Blossom, so... Good when, times, man. Good when times. Liquid has looked good tonight, it is on Mez and AZK playing very well. Like, Mez will get a 4K, AZK gets a 4K. That is really when they've shined the most. Rafa's had his moments as well, but those two, is, as I mentioned before, when they're playing well, it's the best that Liquid plays. Oh. The other thing, too, is it took a Houdini act there from AZK. He was frozen and then slept and right. still somehow got away at 30 HP. Alive. Yeah. But here we go, Liquid moving in once more. AZK just working his way to the back. Primary fires going wild. Takes down Wolf, holding on to Death Blossom for now. And Liquid forcing C9 back once again, and this is a very good time for Liquid right now, even as Adam uh, personally takes care of the AZK threat. <laughs> 
Well, they're flying right now. They do need to probably get out here. Mezde is going to be on the retreat charge as they get away from all the incoming damage. Mendo does switch it up. He is on the Genji, but again, Liquid is going to have most of your ultimates up. Huge ultimate advantage. They've been just really smart about their economy on King's Row. All right, so we see Team Liquid grouping up once more. AZK, Nano Boost in. Death Blossom to the back line. Not getting as much as he wants, but he does set up a Rafa for two kills as Sure4 doing the same in the Team Liquid back line. A time to reap for both teams right now. Sure4 barely able to get away with his life. Both teams battered and bloody right now. This is AZK versus Sure4 here in the building. Mezar going to interrupt that one-on-one, -on -one, taking it out. And Liquid coming out a little bit on top, but not with the crazy momentum they might need to finish this outright. But well, they did have to burn a lot through there too, so not necessarily the closeout ults that they're looking for. Dragon does come out though, and Minstrel is looking to finish this fight as they sound barrier on the offense. Minstrel takes down Kai Kai, boops him off into the pit, and here comes Sure for moving in. Not able to get as much right away, but the nano boost is too much to deal with right in the end. It's a 3k for Sure for making it four. And that's the crazy thing about the combo, is that even when your Death Blossom isn't getting as many kills as you might want, it's still a Reaper that does a lot of damage right. and is super fast at the very end. It does so much damage that even when you're not getting kills, like it's it can chunk through a sound barrier to an extent. There's there's not the, a really great counter for it except run away. All right, so next fight going to be underway here in just a moment. Mezar holding on to the Earth Shatter could set his team up well right now. This is a brief window here where Liquid has an ult advantage. That window will be going away soon as Kai Kai just builds up the Graviton. Now it shifts to C9. Kai Kai can set his team really well here. Graviton get come in, pulls in all five, and Kai Kai being his own fall through, going to the back line with Ribbon Sure for C9 collapsing and getting the full team wipe at Team Liquid's expense. Well, uh, I mean, silver lining, Liquid didn't use any ultimates. I don't know if they had really a chance or a time to do so. And they are going to have, uh, you know, the spin to win combo coming up to hang an AZK at 100%. Rafa about to get there too. So they, their economy still looks pretty well as, as, as far as their ultimates go. It looks pretty healthy. So they're going to have three pushes left to finish out this map. Again, Cloud9 did finish with 30 seconds left. All right, the next fight is underway. We see Sherford going to the back line with that Nano Boost. Takes down two. AZK, though, taking down two in turn. Both Reapers powered up. AZK with three. Sherford with two. And Sherford, I don't know if he's buying off where they can chew here. Going highly deep, but oh. it works out. Still able to take out AZK despite AZK having that honest support. So take a look at it time wise now. Cloud9, about two good team fights away from taking King's Row away from Team Liquid. Again, 90 seconds remain. They are going to have Graviton, and then ID can maybe get a Deadeye going. Deadeye on last point of Kings can be super effective sometimes, but I'm really looking at Mez. He's been the one who's been carrying this team when they need giant plays. Him and AZK, here comes the grab. ID coming in with the Deadeye falling through. Does take down Wolf, and does a lot of damage to the Reinhardt Shield in the process. But it's Kai Kai Mendo turning it back around. Kai Kai has a Graviton up once more. Might use it to finish out this fight, but if he can save it, it's going to be even better, Hex, because Cloud9 now, one major team fight away from taking this map and their war chest, will have Nano Boost, will have a Graviton Surge. Team Liquid is going to need a truly Herculean effort to win this map now. It's going to be tough. Uh, they're going to have Ana Boost. So Ana Boost is very capable of doing a lot of things. They probably Ana Boost AZK, probably get a Death Blossom off of it because he's at about 20% away. So it should be doing enough, but they're going to have to push into short for already with the Ana Boost on his Reaper. This is a little over aggro here. They didn't have it's the Graviton weird. out. I, I don't know about this. This is... C9 it, might have just let Liquid back into this game because now they're going to have a Nano Boost of their own. Kai Kai has to look for a good Graviton here. Doesn't want D.Va to end up inadvertently eating it. Earthstar knocks down three in the back. Here comes the Graviton. Sets up Sure4 for the double kill. Moving in. C9 recovering from their Nano Boost snafu. And with 10 seconds remaining, that should be GG in favor of Cloud9. I think they were just looking to end it with that that boost on the Reaper and just not work out. A really nice disengagement from Liquid, but uh, they're not even going to be able to get to the cart, not able to touch it. And this Cloud9 team. This Cloud9 team getting better and better and able to recover from mistakes because I, I like that. That auto boost Reaper was it was an attempt to win the game, did not work out, but still able to bring it back the way they did was was brutal. That's got to be just like demoralizing to see a team make a mistake and then have it not cost them at all. Well, they're leveling up before our eyes, which is really the interesting thing about this. Oh, I'm gonna play the game hey. coming out here from Adam. Yeah. <laughs>
This is yeah, basically Mercy on King's Row 101. Yeah, pretty much. Mer Mercy getting a drink in the pub casually <laughs> reses up her entire team. I knew it as soon as the res came off. I'm like, we're, we're going to be watching that later, and I know exactly what wall I'm going to be staring at. I love how just staring at a wall, too. It's just... Mercy, I like to imagine she has a drink in hand, just... You know, contemplating life in 